how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So as you can see by the title, today's video is how to make your photos look more professional. This is probably one of my most requested videos ever and today I'm finally going to jump into it and make that happen. So just to start off I want to mention that I edit all of my photos in Adobe Lightroom 5 and I'm going to go through a few example pictures that I've taken myself and just show you the basic steps that I take to getting the look that I do. Okay, so I've just jumped into my laptop now and before I start, I just want to mention that today's editing tutorial is just going to be a very basic sense of editing. It's not really going to be specific to one type of style. So in saying that, let's get into the edit. Okay, so if we jump into Lightroom, as you can see, I already have a few of my own photos selected here. I'm just going to go straight into the develop mode just to make this video as quick as possible as well. I don't want to draw it out. I'm going to start with the typical sunset banger shot with the subject in the middle and an amazing sky in the background. So what I like to do is start off with the whole basic um, settings over here and we can just get straight into it. So usually I like to bring the highlights down just to bring the detail back into the highlights firstly. Um, I usually bring the shadows up in my pictures but since this is a sunset picture I think I'm going to leave this foreground nice and silhouetted with a black contrast to the sky. In saying that I'm going to bring the blacks down a bit as well just to give it more of that silhouette feel and I'm going to bring the whites up a bit just to compensate for the highlights. I'm also going to bring the contrast up a bit just because I like doing that and I feel like it gives a bit more life to the picture. I will leave that as it is for now. Uh, the clarity, I think I'm going to make it at about 10. I don't want to overdo it. Some people take it a bit too far and go all the way to like 50, 60. Or if you go to 100, it just looks really bad. So I would suggest keeping it very minimal if you are going to use it. Some people also like to take it uh, into the negative, which makes the sky look really um, smooth and dreamy. But for this, for this edit, I think I'm going to keep it at about 6. Um, the vibrance, obviously it's a nice sunset, so I want to bring the vibrance out a bit and pull out those specific colors in the sky. So I'm going to leave mine at about 30, somewhere around there. Uh, I think the saturation is fine for now as well. Again, you don't want to overdo the, uh, the vibrance or the saturation in this case, especially for sunsets as well, as people tend to overdo it and go into this kind of mode, which doesn't look too great. It just makes it look really cheap and not the best. So. But that is just my opinion as well it is an art form so you decide on what you want to do but i would suggest keeping it around there getting into the tone curve this is something that people overlook quite a bit that i've seen um and this is probably one of the most important things in editing your photos what i like to do is get a nice basic s curve kind of going that just brings out the best contrast in the shot as well also by lifting this little tail end here it changes the amount of fade as you can see over there so I like to bring it up just a bit and give it a bit of fade if this thing would work. There we go. Also what I like to do is fade out the highlights a bit. So for those of you that don't understand the whole tone curve, what's happening down here at the bottom is all of the shadows and dark areas. So if I bring this all the way down, as you can see, it affects the shadows. If I go to the top and bring this all the way up, it affects the highlights. So if I bring it all the way down, it makes the highlights darker. So that's all how that works. Then. The mid tones are found in the mid area as you would expect and you can adjust this accordingly to how you wish to edit your photos. Like I said though I like to leave it in just a very very basic tone curve. If you want to get into the more advanced tone curve editing you can go into the specific RGB channels and this gives you a lot more control with regards to split toning and all those kind of things. So for example you can go into something like a pink sky like that. Um, this can also be achieved through the split toning, but like I said, the RGB tone curves do give you a lot more control over this. For now though, I think I'm gonna leave it just at a straight line with all the different ones, the red, green, and blue. Just leave it at straight. Moving on to the HSL, I like to keep it in the color spectrum over here. A lot of people that I see on YouTube tutorials like to go into this kind of view, but I like to just keep it on the color thing and choose which specific color I'm editing. So just starting off with the blues, I think I'm going to bring the hue down just a little bit into the more turquoisey look just to give it that kind of tropical feel if that makes sense. I'm also going to bring up the saturation of the orange just to make that pop in the sky because that is kind of the main element of this picture. What you can do as well is bring the yellows into more of an orangey feel. Obviously that would make it more flat and give it a majority orange to it otherwise you can leave it at yellow and have that different color contrast between the yellow the orange and the blues 
Again, you can bring the saturation up of the yellows, but like the saturation of the overall picture that can make it look cheap and just plasticky if that makes sense. So with regards to all the other colors, you can just play around with this and see which colors you want to bring out in the photo. As I've mentioned, blue, orange and yellow are the predominant colors, so obviously you would work around those the most. But for example, if you bring up the reds and the purples and the magenta color, there is a little bit at the top of the sky over here. So you can bring these saturations up and it will make it stand out a bit more. Just another trick to changing the color that a lot of people I don't think know is that if you change the temperature, you can affect the color of the whole sky. So bringing more blues or more oranges into the sky. You see kind of how the purples are moving down and up. So yeah, you just adjust that to your liking and away you go. Okay, moving on to the split toning. So just one more thing before we carry on, I just want to make the horizon straight because this really annoys me with people's photos when the horizon isn't straight. So what I've done is I've just clicked on the crop and straighten tool over here. You can also just press R on your keyboard and then click on this little ruler over here. And then what you can do is click on the one side of the horizon and drag it all the way to the other side along following along the horizon just let go and it'll make your picture perfectly straight according to the horizon press enter and there we go your horizon is straight the picture is looking so much better now we can carry on with the tutorial going into the split toning again this is just personal preference you don't have to do this but it does add nice hues and tones to your picture so if you want to keep it a nice warm feel i would suggest keeping the highlights at a nice orangey kind of color over here Again, that just makes the oranges stand out and gives the highlights the warm feel to them. When it comes to the highlights and shadows, I would suggest keeping it at contrasting colors. So if you have a warm color in the highlights, try to get a cool color in the shadows. Or you can swap it around as well and have a cool color in the, the highlights and have a warmer color in the shadows. So it's all up to you. I think for this image I'm going to leave the detail and the sharpening just how it is. I used to bring the sharpening almost all the way up because I thought it looked really cool but when comparing that to non-sharpened images, the quality of your camera if you're using a DSLR is usually good enough for you not to sharpen it. Sharpening it can mess up the quality of the image so just be careful of that. So I usually just like to leave it at around 30. Moving on to the lens corrections, you can enable profile corrections if you have any distortions to your lenses. So for example, if I press the click there, you go into the profile settings, you can just choose the lens that you have, the make, the model and the profile and it will correct it for you accordingly. For this image, I'm going to leave the grain as well. If you want to get more of a filmy look, you can up the grain. Obviously this image doesn't really correlate with a film style look. So for this example, I'm going to leave the grain on naught. If you come into the camera calibration, this is generally to fix any errors with regards to the color of your camera, but you can take advantage of this and change the actual colors of your picture. So if you bring the hue of the blue down, you can see how it, I don't know, it kind of just gives it a special unique feel to it. So you can mess around with this and see what camera calibration works for you. I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. The last thing that I've noticed is that the highlights in this image are very, very bright. So what I've decided to do is come back up to the basic settings and just bring down those whites a bit more just to give a bit more detail in the, in the highlights over here. So from this, you've got your basic edit and you can play around and tweak with all the different settings as you please. When it comes to editing, it is all personal preference. There's no right or wrong answers. Every picture is different, so every picture will have different settings to achieve the look that you want. So once we've finished up, I just like to put the images side by side to see where we've come along with the edits. As you can see, the colors are a lot more vibrant, the sky is popping out, the foreground is nice and silhouetted to complement the sky, and just in general, the picture is looking very, very high quality. So just to end it all off, right click on your image, go export, and export it to the destination that you please. And there we go, you are left with a high quality edit of a sunset. So that is going to end that. That is how to make your photos look high quality and professional on Adobe Lightroom 5. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you would like to see any other video topics relating to editing, please let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you want to see any other editing styles, please let me know. Or just in general, any other videos to do with photography or videography. Because I'm always looking for new ideas and wanting to help you guys and share my thoughts and experiences and the way I do things with you guys. So, I hope this video helps you in any way, if it did. 
uh, please let me know what you thought of it down below and yeah I will see you guys in the next video as always thank you guys so much for watching if you did like the video please leave a like if you're new around here hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one okay bye